starts and strikes doubles. <laughs> The Londonderry Bowling Center, Stars and Strikes Doubles, features the best Campbellton bowlers from around New England in team competition. <laughs> Stars and Strikes Doubles is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Campbellton Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. And welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center, week two of the new season here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Good afternoon. Glad you could join us. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. And uh, after last week, a big win for uh, Ed Jerolman and Brian Fuller. Not only a win, but a big win. A big score, too, of 427. Yeah, I, I, they bowl well, but I, th I know they think they are fortunate because uh, um, the other team had such a bad game, that second game, and it was really the whole match. But uh, I can't take the 400 series away from them. That's, that's great in doubles. All right, let's meet our two teams for this second week of our first series of the new season. Our number four seeded team looking for their second week in a row. Back from Pelham, New Hampshire, Ed Jeroleman and his partner from East Kingston, New Hampshire, Brian Fuller. Okay, they certainly complimented themselves last week. Uh, Ed carrying an 124 average, his roll-off score 665, and Brian at 120 and 650. And all they did last week uh, was average uh, about 142 per game for three games in that 427 triple with the big win over Tim Lipke and Bill Norton. So now they'll go for two in a row against our number three seeded team in this group. From Pepperell, Mass, Rick Barassa, his partner from Derry, New Hampshire, is Dave Richards. Okay, Rick comes in averaging 126. His roll-off score is 673. Dave Richards at 127 and 671. The roll-off scores, by the way, for this series, very, very close uh, among the 10 bowlers, top to bottom. Uh, just a few pins really separating a lot of the bowlers, and uh, very heavy competition to get on this first series of the new season here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Three strings of doubles coming up here on the wins. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The five teams for this opening series here on Stars and Strikes Doubles for the 93-94 season. Last week, Ed Jerolman and Brian Fuller with the big 427 to knock off Bill Norton and Tim Lipke. So now they move on to face Rick Barassa and Dave Richards, our number three seeded team. Next week, Norm Bork and Rick Kajeki will be in as our challengers. And in two weeks, the series championship match will feature Dan Valcourt and Charlie Willie with that Big 1367 combined. Fuller begin our match, and the last time we saw Brian in the tenth box last week, he threw a triple strike to wrap up that match. <laughs> well, this week he's going to be looking at the the two, the eight, and the ten. Not quite. And it's a 10 box for Brian. Brian Fuller from East Kingston, New Hampshire. And his wife Kathy have a son, Brian Jr. Brian works for Cato Fabrications as a foreman. That's Brian Sr. who does, Brian Jr. doesn't. Brian does a lot of his bowling at the Lafayette Lanes in Amesbury, Mass. Last week, he and his partner, Ed Jerolman, had 20 marks, including that triple strike in the last. 20 marks and 30 boxes. I'm going to win most matches with that. I would say so. Dave Richards for the team of Barassa and Richards to lead it off. Dave has that spinning ball, that blue and white ball that you can really see the spin as it goes down the lanes, and he spin that, spun that one right in for a strike. Five, seven, the last two pins that go down, and you're right, the ball is really moving around. You can really see it with that uh, the color of the bowling ball he has. Nice eight pin drop, six nine left, trying to make it two marks in a row. And no, 
just missing. Actually, for someone like Dave who throws the ball with that spin on it, it's probably better for him to have that swirled style See, bowling ball. If he had a solid one, color one, he wouldn't be able to tell really how much spin he had on the ball. It's a quick 11-pin advantage for Barassa and Richards. Here's Ed Jeroman. Just the four pin for Ed. Trying to put his first mark up for his team. By the way, of the, oh, just sliding by, of the 20 marks they had last week as a team, 10 each. <laughs> That's the way to do it. And again, for a nine box. right. No. So they'll be open the first four ma four boxes of this match and Rick Barassa is going to have a chance to increase that 11 pin lead. 10 by Ed Jeroman. 36 through 4. Now our first look at Rick Barassa splits it three six four and seven this is just the second time that Rick has joined us here on the winds his only other appearance was also in doubles and that was back in December of 1991 when he teamed with his brother Paul and they lost a match to Paul Willits and Tom O'Brien. Back and forth. That for a second looked like it was going to go right flush in the head pin. Last minute broke a little to the left and was able to catch the one two pocket. Not this time, though. No. Misses the hit, the three pin for the spare. Ten pin lead after four for Barassa and Richards. Back around to Brian Fuller now. This all left-handed team. The red team. Fuller and Jeroleman, Barassa and Richards wearing the blue. And the spare. First mark for the team. Three ten left, and with the angle, the wood behind the three, another piece in front of the ten. If he's on the three pin, this is going to be another spare. Yes, two in a row, and another look at the three ten. Perfect ball. Don't forget tomorrow at noon here on the winds. Candle pin stars and strikes singles competition. Tom Morgan goes for his second win in a row. He'll be facing Bill Coffold. Dave Richards on all over the five pin for another mark for his team. First spare, the team of Barassa and Richards. And on the spare, right through the heart for a four fill. Three, five, six, ten on the right, four, seven with a piece of wood in front on the left. Gonna go after the three and the six. Almost the cut shot. He'll take a nine box. No, a chance for Ed Jeroleman to give his team the lead. 
fill on this mark. Anything above a five will do it. Then again. Doesn't qu quite want the lead yet. It's too early to match. <laughs> Waiting for the home stretch. <laughs> One nine ten left for Ed. And there it is. Ten bucks. Just nice a, ten bucks. Yeah, just enough to catch a little bit of the ten and the nine. Seventy eight through seven. drop and now it's a nine drop the two pin taking advantage using the wood three marks for the team Rick Barassa just missing the head pin and picking out the two Rick works for the Littleton Light Department. Lives in Pepperell with his wife, Maria. The kids are Sarah, Laura, and Amanda. Rick does a lot of his bowling both at the Acton Bowlerdrome in Massachusetts and Lita Lanes in Nashua. And Rick trying to escape that box only gets a five. So Lee does switch to the other side. Jerome and Fuller now lead by four. And they already have a mark posted. And there's a big comeback ball. First mark for Rick Barassa, and it's a big one. Just tripping the four pin out right there off the wall. Matches the mark already put up by Edge Rollman. And now Brian Fuller will fill that spare in the eighth. Oh, my. Well, we saw a two chop out a moment ago. This time the one and the nine. That's on a spare. This goes to three, so he's got the one, three, and the nine out of there. One ball left, still looking at seven pins. Oh, great out. That's a nice nine box right there. And maybe a ten. It is a ten. What a great shot. Notation next to that one. Oh, and he comes right back with a strike in the tenth. Will we see a repeat performance of last week's third game? Well, he, as Doug said, he finished with a triple strike, the last box of last week's match. First, the man had the match well in hand at the time. Uh, pulled that one. That one got away a little bit. One more ball. And the spare in the 10th. 120 for Jerome and Fuller. When Dave Rich was working on the strike, put up by his partner, Rick Barras, in the, in the, uh, the eighth, and we have a pin missing, the eighth pin. Dave Richards' last appearance on the wins was in singles competition back in May of 92. Had a heck of a match against Mike Morgan, lost by nine pins. Came from more than 40 pins down and almost won it. Four, seven, eight for a spare. Gotta hurry. That's going to give them the lead back again, at least temporarily. Or is it tie? I guess, no, they're leading by two. But now they're facing a 20 box strike and a spare put up by Brian Fuller. Yeah, makeable spare, one, two, ten. Well, 
Let's see. Oh, no. wow. <laughs> so it'll be Jerome and Fuller in the lead after one. Ten in the tenth for Dave Richards. Two games to come here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. 120 to 112, the eight pin lead for Jerome and Fuller. We're back with the middle game in a minute. Rick Barrasso will start game two. Trailing by eight. On the head pin, he'll shoot at the three, six, and seven with wood. I don't know if the wood's going to be a factor, though. <laughs> Almost. At least it helped keep the three pin in play. And it'll be a nine box for Rick. The losing team today will share $200 in prize money. The winners, of course, come back next week to face our number two seeds, Norm Bork and Rick Kojecki. Oh, boy. Five and the eight. He's flush on the five pin, drove it straight back. Never touched the eight pin. And the ten. If you'd like to come down to a taping here at London Dairy Bowling Center for Stars and Strikes Doubles, we'd love to have you. And we'll be here again on Tuesday, October the 26th, a week from Tuesday. We start around 10 in the morning, 10, 10.30. We're here till 4 or 4.30 in the afternoon, so at any time during that stretch, if you happen to be near London Dairy, Right near the Apple Tree Mall is where the London Dairy Bowling Center is located, off Route 102. We'd love to see you. Oh, it's pointing six box for Ed Jerolman. Cuts the lead to five pins. Working now on lane 29, and he takes the half Worcester left. Our presenting sponsor here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, as always, our friends at Tri-State Megabucks. Just imagine being rich. Give it a try. You never know. Tri-State Megabucks. Solid supporters of Candlepin Bowling here on the winds. A nine box for Ed Jerome, and the lead is down to four. Cut the lead in half without the benefit of the mark. How very important it is to pin. It's a total of 15 pins for Jerolman and Fuller, 19 for Barassa and Richards. Dave had a bad feeling about that ball. He saw it breaking a little bit too much and it went right through the center. Let's see what he does with this. And the nine. Dave Richards. I believe I said Derry earlier. Dave actually lives in Plastow now. Big nine drop, leaving the seven. Dave lives there with his wife, Beth. Dave works for MVP Sports. No, on the single. You heard him say <laughs> no. The ball was spinning, but a little more speed on that one straightened it out. Didn't break from right to left, which it normally does. Ryan Fuller. In the pocket, but leaves the diamond. 
crossed over to the Brooklyn pocket for the left-hander, the 1-3. guys are calling the match themselves. You notice that? <laughs> Brian said no, then two on the diamond. <laughs> Over on lane 29. Again off to the Brooklyn side. This time with a little better result. The two, four, and seven with Wood. But he missed it. the halfway point of this match and it's getting closer the difference now just three Jerome and Fuller in the lead we'll be back the rest of game two straight ahead you look at Rick Barassa just barely biting into that 1-3 pocket and leaves the 8-10. I believe you've got to play the three pieces of wood in front of the 8-pin, see if you can get something moving. Almost. Both teams still looking for their first mark of the second game. Something about the second game. I guess so. Certainly isn't a lack of effort, but... <laughs> Second game last week was when it all fell apart for Bill Norton and Tim Lipke. Spare leave now for Rick on the six pin. And the spare. Fourth mark for the team. Deep breath by... Rick Barassa, and finally we get a <coughs> mark up there. Still trying to grab the lead back. Edge Roman's team still leading by three. Ed was fortunate there. That looked like it started out to be a half Worcester, right? Instead, one, two, six, ten. This would a couple pieces would be behind the three pin. A uh, two pin, I should say. No. Ed Jeroleman from Pelham, New Hampshire. Lives there with his wife, Gloria. Ed works for the Raytheon Company. Ed's all over the place. He bowls here at Londonderry regularly, at Lita Lanes in Nashua, and also at the Merrimack Bowling Center. That covers a pretty wide area. <laughs> this match is dead even now through 15 completed boxes. Big first ball that time. Need a mark to keep pace. Going for the 10 pin. For the spare. And it's still dead even. Six marks for the team of Jerome and Fuller. But they've had a two fill and a four fill. He's been hitting lane 30 pretty well. Not this time, though. Off the head pin, and got, let's see, five. One, three, four, seven, and nine. See if he can make it happen. Not quite. And nine. do that on the spare crossed over in the one two pocket that time and got some a lot of pins to stick around on the plate that time doing a lot of damage for the strike Brian Fuller filling Ed Jerome and spare with seven and how about that for a nice turn of the wood <laughs> looks like he could just push it straight back however it's out in front of the three pin no it, problem it works back-to-back -back spares Things heating 
up here a little bit. Strike on spare. And three in a row for the team of Jerome and Fuller. You see him just kicking the seven pin out. Rick Barassa working on a strike. Both teams with strike in the eighth. Eight fill. Eight box. And now a half Worcester. Two and the eight go out of there. Trailing by five pins, completed boxes. Another eight box, 106, 218 through two for the team of Barassa and Richards. Let's see if Ed Drollman can keep the string alive. Got three consecutive marks, two spares and a strike. 87 plus the two bonus balls on the strike. Nice pocket hit. Look out. That close to a double. The lonely 10 pin. Yes. Four marks in a row. Another nine drop. Wow. Out of nowhere, they had 40 after the first five boxes. <laughs> and now they're at a 116 in the ninth and chance for another mark. No, not Ooh. this time. Doing really the same thing they did last week, Dan. Not quite as dramatically, but uh, taking a small lead and building it in the second game. And they did all of that building in the last few boxes. 125 this time for Jerome and Fuller. 245 through two and a 27 pin lead with one game to go. We'll be back and see if Barassa and Richards can answer in game three. Don't go away. For work here, if you have any uh, questions, comments, criticisms, uh, if you want Dan to give a little quick bowling tip on the air, whatever you like, send your comments, questions into WNDS TV 50, 50 television place. Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. I've mentioned this uh, on the air many times before, but uh, it's certainly worth repeating. We don't get a chance to really respond to every letter, either in writing or over the air, but uh, we do appreciate the mail, and uh, we enjoy hearing from you. Brian Fuller. The spare for Brian. We have a 27 pin lead on the board for Jerome and Fuller. Oh no, locked. That piece of wood blocking Brian on the five and the nine. Just deflected. The wood deflected that ball around the five and the nine. Now Dave Richards up on lane number 30. And the big strike. You're right, Dan. Uh, Dave Richards seems to be on target on lane 30. More often than not. That time in the one two pocket, but it's a lot of pin action off that ball. 
just a little heavier that time in the head pin. Let's see. We're going to get a break with the <laughs> six pin. Six, seven left. Interesting, though, to this point, Dan, the team of Barassa and Richards with just two spares and four strikes. Oh, that would have been a big spare right there for Dave, but not quite. Nine fill on the strike. And the 10 box. 29 through two. Just missing. Normally that, although it sounds good to have more strikes than spares, that generally is not a good indicator. You're right. Usually means you're not giving yourself enough chances to make spares. You know, unless you bowl seven boxes and get five strikes, I guess. Then that's yeah, different. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty tough to depend on those strikes, though. Three, six, and seven. Off the wall. Oh, oh yes. Great shot. Ed liked it. Mark number 11 for the team, and this was pretty. Inside the three pin, off the wall. And there goes the seven. Now the pill. Eight. And the 2-6. 10 box for Ed. 55 through 4. Remember, Jerome and Ann Fuller had a 27-pin lead coming into this game. Rick Barassa, getting a few extra pins. He'll have the one and the 10. Let's see, no. Ten box for Rick. Lead now 33. We're running out of time. They're going to put some offense up now. The team of Morass and Richards. That ball coming up a little bit short. One, two, seven, nine, and ten. Well, certainly not the leave you would select when you need a mark, but it is makeable. Get that. One, two, pocket correctly, something oh, like boy. that, and he got robbed on the nine pin. Everything but the nine. Great effort by Rick Barassa. It turns out to be a ten box, though. We will pause right here. Jerome and Fuller in the lead. Six boxes to go. They're looking for their second straight win. We'll be back to see if they can close it out. Don't go away. Applause for Brian Fuller. Getting another pocket hit. Here's the 310. And the wood looks good from here. I think have trouble trouble with the 10 pin. Let's see. No, it's just pushes it straight back. Mark of the fifth, 65 and a ball to come. Leading by 33. Oh, my. All three marks for the team in this game over on lane 30, but they have not solved lane 29 yet. And after a three on the spare, now Brian's trying to bail out here. We'll take eight. Total of 21 pins in those two boxes. Chance for Dave Richards to put up two big marks, cut right into that lead. And 
Jordan Davis in there for a strike. Yeah, lane 30 again. I know he's thinking, boy, if I could throw a double strike here, this game is going to really tighten up. Light hit. Let's see. Still Look out. Oh. The 10 pin. This could be a tough pin for Dave. Way that ball spins and wants to break from right to left. He's going to use a lot of speed. Nope. Yeah. He knew that was a critical shot, too. That could have helped cut into the lead. Instead, with the 10 box, it will still be a 25-pin lead with four boxes to go. Well, that could have been a big miss right there. That's an example of what you were just talking about, more strikes than spares. Just in those single pins. Two spares and five strikes. Ed waiting out the wood here. Five and, five and ten. Piece of wood directly in front of the five, I believe. Might be able to get by and cut the five over. If not, he might be able to move the wood. He's going after the wood. Nope. Of course, in this situation, every mark for Jerome and Fuller moves them closer to closing out the match. Let's take another look at that. Just <laughs> sliding by that five. And open here. In the eighth, leaves the door open a little bit. Let's see. It's going to be a tough one. The three, six, and the four. A piece of wood, but I don't think it's going to come into play. Nope. So there will be an opening for Rick Barassa. Ed Jerome and is through for the day. A couple of frustrating boxes there. He threw some pretty good balls, but didn't get anything to show for it. It's on the head pin. <clears throat> New life for Rick Barassa. He can put two marks up. In a hurry, you heard Dave Richards, <laughs> hurry up. He knew that ball was way out to the right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ball choked up about this match, huh? Oh, it's, takes a lot out of me up here. <laughs> Seven, nine, ten. It's the altitude. Yes, yeah, okay. right. We're up a little higher here in London, Derry. <laughs> <laughs> this will look great if it goes. Oh, almost. Rick just couldn't get it to jump over there. Twenty-five pins down. They're three marks away with three boxes remaining. So <laughs> I'd say they'd have to put one up now. Easy math. It's a good looking ball. It kicks out the six pin and then the two. Four, seven. Well, a mark here would certainly put just a tiny bit of extra pressure on Brian Fuller because then he'd like to oh. put one up, but Rick picks it off. He's on the object pin, but flush, and now you're in the double strike situation for Dave Richards. Still the 25 pin difference. Now two boxes to go. There's a couple marks by Brian Fuller here and could close the door entirely. Ooh. However, a bad frame would take him out of the situation of a double strike and just two big marks. A lot of possibilities. The winners to face Norm Bork and Rick Kojecki in the semifinals next Saturday. It's a nine box for Brian. 104 through nine. They're going to be well below their total of last week, but it may be enough. No, big first ball there, and Brian will be shooting at the five pin with no wood in the way. And there is mark number 13 for the team. They had 20 last week. 
Brian loves this 10th frame. <laughs> 114 plus this bonus ball. Last week he threw a triple strike in the 10th. First game today he went strike spare in the 10th. And this time... Oh, look at this! <laughs> strike spare! Or I should say spare strike. Either way, it's 20 pins in the 10th. I believe that locks um, Dave Richards out. Got 39, 29 pins in the last two boxes. He's down by 25. Well, he needs a triple strike. Yep. It's still possible. Got to have all strikes here. Yep. He's thrown several already and almost. That will do it. Well, we talked about the whole element of spares and strikes. And here in the final two boxes of the match, that's just the third spare for the team of Richards and Barassa. They have five strikes, but they haven't been able to put any of them together. But really, the difference in this match, when you look back down, is those four boxes toward the end of the second game when Jerome and Fuller went spare, spare, strike, spare. So at that point, there are eight pins down in that game alone. They came back to win that game 128 to 106. So make it two in a row for Ed Jerome and Brian Fuller, a 120 for Barassa and Richards. Their total, 338. And the three-string total for our champions, 369. Two straight wins. They'll move into the semifinals next week, and we will move into our interviews with the bowlers right after these words. And welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center, week two of this opening series of the 93-94 season in the books. And uh, this time, another win for Ed Jerome and Brian Fuller. The final score is once again 369 to 338. Let's bring up our runners-up, give them some prize money here. Rick Barassa and Dave Richards will take home the uh, runner-up checks. Come on up, guys, and uh, share $200 here. You can split those checks up for me. And uh, it, uh, it was kind of a funny match. We talked about, we talked about this before, about when a, a team gets going with more strikes than spares. That makes it tough unless you put the strikes together, and you just weren't able to do that. Well, that's it. You know, I mean, I had a couple strikes there and then dropped the, get, got a spare leave, and I just couldn't take advantage of it, you know, and not taking anything away from those guys. Those guys pulled out. We appreciate uh, both of you guys being here. Rick's good to see you. I know you hadn't been here for a while. Uh, maybe not the way you'd hoped it would turn out, but uh, a close match right up till the end. There were opportunities for you. Yeah, we just couldn't string them together mm -hmm. the whole day. Just nothing. Maybe next time. You got that, uh, you had that strike ball working, though, on lane 30, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do anything wrong on that lane. <laughs> like to stay there, but... Congratulations uh, on making it to the show. Of course, full season stretching out in front of us, so perhaps we'll see you again before, uh, before the springtime. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, Rick Barassa and Dave Richards, our runners-up. Let's bring our winners up again. Second time here at the, uh, at the end of the show, Ed Jerome and Brian Fuller. Not the uh, the big spectacular uh, 427 this time, but uh, enough to get the W, I suppose. Huh? Hey, we'll take them any way they come, I guess. <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna keep him bowling last. He's a 10th frame boy, oh boy. He... Hey, you like that? You like that 10th spot, don't you? So far, yeah. <laughs> now, at this point, do you guys think you got two in a row? Uh, you think about winning four straight at this point? Uh, uh, never, never, <laughs> never, 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 never. Uh, with the guys coming up, I know Rick uh, Kachecki very well and uh, very capable of putting the big scores up there. Well, that'll be next week. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing that one. Alrighty. All right, guys. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Ed Jerome and Brian Fuller. And let's get a look at next week. A little preview here on Stars and Strikes Doubles from the number four spot. Ed Jerome and Brian Fuller now with two wins in a row. A 427 two weeks ago. This week, a 369. The match a little bit closer, but uh, still the win. And it doesn't matter if uh, you win by 100 or you win by one. It's all the same. You move on, and they get a chance to face our uh, number two seeded team now, Norm Bork and Rick Kajeki next week. They'd like, <clears throat> they'd like two more weeks just like the last two, and uh, <laughs> they'd be in the Tournament of Champions. That's what they're looking for, and a win is a win. All right, don't forget, uh, tomorrow afternoon at noon here on the wins, we'll have week two in singles for you. Tom Morgan looks for his second straight win. He will face Bill Coppold. Until then, don't forget to come back here next Saturday at noon for Stars and Strikes Doubles. I'm Doug Brown for the whole crew. Have a good weekend, everybody.